见证之一。Come and help us, O oh God, O oh Zana. Come deliver, O oh God, O oh Zana. Give us courage and joy, O oh Zana. For your song is our strength, O oh Zana. With astonishment, fear, and wonder, we are walking the road with Jesus. We are walking the peaceful pathway. We are singing the coming King. Blessed is the one who is coming and is riding upon a donkey. Praise is high in the heights of heaven. Praise the name of our God most holy. For the kingdom is now upon us and is coming in all its fullness. It will raise up the poor and humble with compassion and love. Hosanna. Come and help us, O oh God, Hosanna. Come deliver, O oh God, Hosanna. For your song is our strength, Hosanna. For the song is our strength, Hosanna. With astonishment, fear, and wonder, we are walking the road with Jesus. We are walking the peaceful pathway. We are singing the coming kingdom. With astonishment, fear, and wonder, we are walking the road with Jesus. We are walking the peaceful pathway. We are singing the coming kingdom. As with visions of fear and power, are approaching the sword with armor. With Emmanuel, we are marching with no swords but a song. Come and help us, O oh God, Hosanna. Come deliver, O oh God, Hosanna. Give us courage and joy, Hosanna. For your song is our strength, Hosanna. With astonishment, fear, and wonder, we are walking the road with Jesus. We are walking the peaceful pathway. We are singing the coming. We're surrounded by glad companions, holy company great and awesome. All our ancestors singing witness to the Holy One working among us. Here is Miriam with her timbrel. Here is Joshua with the shofars. Here are Silas and Paul from prison. They are singing God reign, Hosanna. Come and help us, O oh God, Hosanna. Come deliver, O oh God, Hosanna. Give us courage and joy, Hosanna. For your song is our strength, Hosanna. With astonishment, fear, and wonder, we are walking the road with Jesus. We are walking the peaceful pathway. We are singing the song.
Good morning and welcome to worship with Willow Avenue Mennonite Church. If you are with us in person or online, either way, we are so glad to have you with us this morning. If we haven't met before, I'm Audrey Hines, the senior pastor here at Willow Avenue, where Jesus welcomes all, and so do we. Today, as you may have guessed, is Palm Sunday, the traditional start to Holy Week, the final week of Jesus' life. There's a tension on this day which celebrates the daring political move of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem in the matter of a highly dramatic street performance. Yet we know this week ends in death and darkness. So today we will be invited to take the risk of following Jesus through this week so that we may also fully follow Jesus into life. It's worth remembering that the word Hosanna isn't one that's happy and chipper. It means something like, Lord, help. We also remember that in the context of the Roman oppression, survival meant keeping quiet. We are a community here at Willow Avenue that prays for one another during our service and during the week. All are invited to text prayer requests this morning to 559-960-8777 to be shared a little bit later in our service. We're grateful to Melly Howard for her prayerful preparation this morning for her sermon. If you're online and you have not yet had a chance to do so, I invite you to find something to eat and something to drink to participate in our service of communion this morning, which will take place after the sermon. Let us now prepare our hearts with a moment of silence. I invite you to stand in body or spirit and join me in reading responsibly a portion of Psalm 118 and then remain standing for hymn number 313 that follows. I will read the white print on the screen and invite you to respond by reading the green print, the bolded green print. Can you see that it's green? A little bit. It's the bolded part, if that helps. <laughs> Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. Because Let Israel say it. For Open the gates of righteousness for me. This is the Lord's gate. I thank you because you answered me, because you were my saving help. The stone rejected by the builders is now the main foundation stone. This has happened because of the Lord. It is astounding in our sight. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and celebrate with you. Lord, please save us. The one who enters in the Lord's name is blessed. We bless all of you from the Lord's The Lord is God. He is the Lord of So lead the festival offering with ropes all the way to the horns of the altar. You are my God. I will you. you are my God. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. Sing, prepare the 
Christ is our Redeemer, the Lord of heaven, our King. Please be seated. I would like to invite the children to come back up for a moment. How did your palm do when you were swinging it around? <laughs> Maybe I got a little um, zealous with my palm waving. Thanks for being a part of this. Do you know why we have palm branches uh, other than it's Palm Sunday? Well, there is a holiday that Jewish people still celebrate today called the Festival of Booths, or the Festival of Sukkot, which just means booths. And a booth is kind of like a canopy, kind of like a tent. And every year, Jewish people will build one and cover them with palm branches to remind them of the time when God led the people of Israel out of Egypt because life was rough there and Pharaoh was kind of mean. And the interesting thing is that right now, well, right now in the story with Jesus, the Israelites have another group of people that they're feeling like, man, we wish Jesus would deliver us, would save us from this kind of hard life with the Romans. So they wave these palm branches as a signal that they hope that Jesus will be like Moses and rescue them from the Romans. And so that's why we wave palm branches on Palm Sunday. There's other things too, but that's kind of the gist of it. So we remember lots of things too. And uh, palm branches is one way of remembering the story of Jesus and remembering the story of Moses too. So we'll see you in a little bit, right? You're going to come back after godly play because there's some more that we have yet to do with palm branches today. Okay. Okay. You go to godly play. We're glad you're here. We love you. And God loves you. As we join our hearts together with God's in prayer for the church, community, and world, a reminder that you can text your prayer request to 559 960 87 Seven, seven. Let us pray. God of the foolish cross, you are not the savior we expect. Your power does not look like the power we want our God to demonstrate. Your wisdom makes no sense to us. We are happy to join the crowd waving branches, but not so sure we want to follow you into the temple courts, into the upper room, into the garden of Gethsemane, to the foot of the cross. Forgive our false assumptions. Clarify our clouded vision. Free us to relax into the foolishness of your love and grace. For our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open us to a future in which we can be changed and grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image. As I lift up each prayer from our congregation, I will conclude with the words, Lord, in your great love, and invite you to respond. Hear our prayer. We pray for Olivia's granddaughter, Reagan, recovering from a small procedure on Friday. May she grow in strength and healing. Lord, in your great love. 
from Marlene Steffen, prayers for Jim Brennan, experiencing pain following a surgical procedure for skin cancer. Lord, in your great love. We pray for Laura Roberts' mother, Elvira Schmidt, who has been moved to hospice care. Pray that Elvira experiences peace and comfort in the coming days. Lord, in your great love. From Bill Braun, who has recently been at the Midnight World Conference meetings in British Columbia, where this prayer request from a delegate in Myanmar, unable to receive a visa into Canada to attend, sent this prayer. On March 30th, military aerial bombardment of a village in Chin State in Myanmar killed a dozen villagers, including the pastor's daughter and several members of Mennonite World Conference member church, Bible Missionary Church. Many villagers were severely injured, including the local pastor. Please pray for solace for all those affected. Pray for an end to violence. Lord, in your great love, We pray for those in the worldwide church who are learning to follow Jesus in this strange day and age. Help us to seek and find you regardless. Lord, in your great love. Between these words, beneath these words, beyond these words, God meet us in places where words cannot go. Amen. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and yet once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the, through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. 
They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large, large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and said, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. May this become God's word for us. So when I was a freshman in college, I was a Bible major. And I still remember going into my very first Bible class and the professor saying to us, okay, we're going to look at a familiar story, Jesus' birth story. And I was like, great, I know this one, perfect. Like, I have trained all my life for this. And so the professor tells us, you know, okay, go ahead and open your Bibles to Luke chapter 2. I open my Bible to Luke chapter 2. And then he says, okay, how did Mary and Joseph get to Bethlehem. And I'm like, oh, I don't even need to look at the text. I, you know, shoot up my hand, ready to answer this question. I know it. I'm like, they got to Bethlehem on a donkey. And the professor was very gracious and said, well, go, go look at the text. Go, go look and uh, show me the verse where you see the donkey. And I'm reading, and I'm reading, and as many of you know, there is, in fact, no donkey in Luke chapter 2. And this was very troubling to me. I mean, I had been in my church Christmas pageants growing up. Like, I had been alongside the little kid in his cardboard cut out of a donkey, you know, pretending to be the donkey in the Christmas pageant. I know the story. And it wasn't there. Well, at the risk of ruining some of our Palm Sundays, um, I want to also point out to us that it is Palm Sunday. We have waved our palm branches, which is falling apart. We have waved our palm branches. But if you listen carefully just now to the text that Wayne just read for us, you will have noted that there are, in fact, no palms. I'm very sorry. There are branches, to be sure. Matthew does give us branches. Uh, in Mark's version, Mark even adds that they are leafy branches. Luke, no foliage whatsoever. And in fact, it is only in John's gospel that we have palm branches for this typical Palm Sunday reading. But today, no palm branches. Now, I mentioned that when I discovered that there was no donkey in the birth story, and perhaps as you are discovering that there are no palms in our reading from Matthew 21, that there could be a sense of fear discomfort? Has the church lied to us all this time that there was a donkey in the infancy story, that there were palms in the triumphal entry story? This might feel discomforting because these are the stories in which we ground so much of our faith. We gather together at Christmas and celebrate the infancy accounts of Jesus. We gather during Holy Week, during Easter, and celebrate Jesus' resurrection. And when we discover that there are elements of those key pieces of our faith that are not there, that can feel uncomfortable. Because in many ways, our faith, the stories, the texts that we read, are what ground us. They ground us in our identity as individuals and in our identity as a community. And I'd like to suggest this morning that for Matthew, Matthew is doing the same thing for his audience. As we take a look at what it is uh, that Matthew is telling us, Matthew situates the story of Jesus within the larger story of Israel. So as Wayne had read for us, uh, Jesus sends his disciples out to get a donkey, to get a colt. Uh, they go out and do this. And Matthew tells us, well, here's why. It was because it was to fulfill what was written in the prophet. In Zechariah chapter 9, Zechariah says, uh, in fact, uh, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on the colt, the foal of a donkey. 
And Matthew takes us to something of an extreme because where I think most of us would look at Zechariah and be like, okay, yes, like Zechariah is making use of this really lovely poetic image. Um, on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Matthew recognizes this as like, oh, Zechariah talks about two animals. We better make sure to put Jesus on two animals. And it ends up into this ridiculous scene where somehow Jesus is riding both a donkey and a colt at the same time. How does Matthew imagine this happening? I don't know. But for Matthew, he's so concerned to situate the story of Jesus within the faith tradition that Jesus is on both of those animals. And so as Matthew tells this story of Jesus, Matthew is drawing on the tradition of Zechariah that talks about God as one who saves God's people, who conquers God's enemies. And so as Matthew tells this story of Jesus with that story in the background, Matthew invites his audience to recognize Jesus is like the God of our ancestors, is like the God of the faith tradition that came before us. But this is not the only place where Matthew does this. So as uh, Jesus comes in, the crowds are proclaiming, uh, Matthew says, and they're saying loudly, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Here again, Matthew is drawing on the language of the faith of his audience. Matthew quotes here from Psalm 118, which we read together this morning. In the Hebrew, it says, Hoshiana, as Audrey pointed out to us. This literally means something more like, save us, please, help us, save. And yet Matthew twists this a little bit. Matthew turns this not so much into a plea for salvation, though it is still that, but also he turns it into a proclamation of praise. That is, our tradition tells us that this can be a plea, a cry. And yet, Matthew says, as we bring this cry into our own time, we can hear it as a praise to God. A praise for the ways that God is, in fact, saving God's people through Jesus in the story that Matthew is telling us. And so Matthew draws upon these two texts from the Old Testament to help us understand the story of Jesus. These are the texts that would have been the core texts of faith. These would be the texts that, like for me, when I discovered that there was no donkey in the infancy narrative, these would be those texts that would have been foundational to the audience that Matthew was speaking to. Biblical theologian Brevard Childs says that for the earliest Christians, the question isn't really so much, what do we do with Jesus? How do we make sense of the Old Testament and what it could say about Jesus? Rather, Childs says the primary question for the earliest Christians was, we have the scripture. We have the traditions of our faith. How can those traditions help us understand who Jesus is. Not make sense of Jesus in light of those things, but use those things to help us make sense of Jesus because those traditions, those texts, are so foundational to our identity as a people that they are going to be what can help us to understand who we are and to understand our own faith. As we enter into this week of Holy Week, it might be tempting at some points to tune out a little bit. We've heard the story before. We know how it goes. We know the ending. But yet, I think there is something so foundational in what Matthew is doing that can teach us to do something similar, to look at these foundational texts, these foundational stories, and ask, what are the ways that these can continue to speak to us today? Now, we are, of course, in a different position than Matthew. Matthew, of course, is working only with the text of the Hebrew Bible, looking at those and seeing how they can shed light on who Jesus is. We, too, now have an additional set of texts. Matthew has contributed to this set of texts to tell us the story of Jesus. And so we have the opportunity during this Holy Week to ask, 
how can these stories of Jesus function for us? Like the stories of the Hebrew Bible functioned for the earliest audiences of the Gospel of Matthew. And beyond our text, we also have an opportunity to engage physically, bodily in this. Later this morning, we'll gather here at this table around communion and take part in a celebration of our faith that goes far, far back to the earliest Christian communities that gathered around similar tables to proclaim the mystery of their faith. And in gathering, we too shall find a way of rooting our identity, not only with one another, though we will do that, but with the larger history of Christians who have gone far before us, who have said this is a place where we can find who we are. And at the end of our service today, we'll conclude by watching the cross process in through the main aisle and be laid here at the front. And we'll depart in silence, which is a tradition for this particular body. And as we do this, it becomes a way not only to reflect on the current moment, but to reflect on the ways in which the God who initially saved the world through that cross continues to save us and call us God's own children today. May it be so. We have turned now decidedly from the exuberance of Palm Sunday to face the coming days which lead to Jesus' betrayal announced at the Last Supper on Thursday and his execution on Friday. It's hard to experience the joy of Easter Sunday without first descending with Jesus into these shadowy places. Our processional hymn said, with astonishment, fear, and wonder, we are walking the road with Jesus. Let us now continue to take the next faithful step together. As we prepare for our service of communion, I invite you to join with me in the liturgy that will appear on the screen. I will read the white print and invite you to read the rose-colored print. God now gathers us at this table as the body of Christ to hear the voice of heaven saying, you are my beloved. O 
God, ancient of days, your love brought galaxies into being, summoned water and sky, earth and all creatures, and made us into your image. Through the ages, you have cared for all you created. When we wandered, you called us to return to you. In the fullness of time, you sent us the Messiah, Jesus Christ, to teach the law of love. He lived what he taught and loved his enemies to the end. In wonder, we remember the life Jesus lived, laid down, and took up for us again. Send your spirit upon us so that the bread we break and the cup we share may be the communion of the body of Christ. Send your spirit upon us so that we can live conform to Christ who taught us to pray in this way. Blessed one, our source and support, holy is your name. May your love be enacted in the world. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in our time of trial and deliver us from evil. For all that we do in your love and all that your love brings to birth and the fullness of love that will be are yours now and forever. Amen. Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, when you share bread together, remember me. Jesus took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant. When you drink it together, remember me. The table has been prepared as Jesus requested, and we are invited to the meal. Like Peter, with more enthusiasm than resolve, like James and John, dismayed by the priorities of God's reign. Like Martha, hosting and leading with confidence, like Mary, full of love and grief. Like Judas, disillusioned and rebellious, like Mary Magdalene, faithful to the end. Jesus offers the bread and cup. Come with your hunger, come with your thirst. All who wish to participate may now come forward, receive a piece of bread or a gluten-free cracker, and take a cup as we form a circle around the sanctuary. When all who wish to participate have their elements, we will eat and drink together, both here and with our friends online. Come now, the table is prepared for you.
friends, this is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us eat together. Friends, this is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us drink together. May this meal nourish us and refresh us. May it strengthen us and renew us. May it unite us and keep us in God's gracious love now and forever. Amen. You may set your cups on any hard surface. <laughs> you may be seated. April will be a month of sending, farewell, and commissioning. The Sunday after Easter, we'll be sending Linda and Pakisa to Congo with a commission, and the week after that, we're sending Arthur and Margie in mission to North Baltimore. Uh, you've received news that uh, Arthur, who's been serving us for a couple of years as com uh, community pastor, is on his way to uh, be lead pastor in North Baltimore. So you go with our blessing, and uh, we'll have a much more formal giving you thanks and sending you on your way. But we see this both as a farewell, but also as a commissioning as we send you to continued ministry. Thank you for the leadership you have given and give. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> um, I would like to take just a moment to tell you about a few things in the life of the congregation this morning. Um, immediately following the conclusion of our service, which will end in going out in silence, um, as we said earlier, and Audrey will come tell us about it. Um, we'll have a time of fellowship across the way in the fellowship hall. For those of you who are online, of course, continue to um, spend time talking with one another. And then in our second hour this morning, a uh, sermon talk will take place in the conference room, a chance to talk about the things that are stirred in our hearts and minds from what Melly said this morning and anything that God is kind of stirring through this morning together. The friendship class will be meeting in their classroom. And then the Matisse Linton group will be meeting in here. That includes the youth and the children. So um, that's happening this morning. And then this afternoon, I'll point out that this requiem is taking place. Hopefully you've seen these signs. I will put it out in the back somewhere else. It's at University Presbyterian this afternoon. Maybe some of you are singing in this. It's quite possible, I'm sure. I know Joe is. And our church is helping sponsor this combined choir event. So I encourage you to find the details and check that out. And of course, uh, there's a plethora of announcements in our bulletin this morning, so please read through that sheet as well. Um, I'll just highlight that um, we've got our save the date for our summer camp for kids, so please take that and please give that to someone with kids. It's a save the date, there's more information available. And then there is, of course, and hopefully you all got one of these, um, an upcoming events, because there's so many things that are happening right now. We wanted to put them all in one place. You take this home, you put it on your refrigerator or wherever you put things that you want to remember. Take one of these, take one extra if they've got them out there this morning. So that's just a couple of those things. Um, I will also mention, of course, this week, um, we will have our Monday, Thursday meal at six o'clock on Thursday, of course. I um, encourage you to sign up to come and to bring some food or just sign up. 
Don't bring food if you're not coming, but do, do that. And if you need a ride, let us know, because we want to make sure that everyone who would like to come in the evening can come for that. And then, of course, our Good Friday service will be at 7 p.m. Thursday at 6, because it's a meal. Friday at 7, because it's a service. And then, of course, our Easter celebrations will be on Sunday morning. And you've been noticing probably that if you have any donations, donations of things, or to help for the event that's taking place, talk with Dean or Jerry. Also, tomorrow, um, our Sewing Peace group meets, and tomorrow is one of the special Sewing Peace days because they'll be working on MCC school kits tomorrow. So if you sew, want to learn to sew, and have time tomorrow, um, please consider coming for that. And um, I know they need RSVPs because there's food for that. And if you want any more information, talk to Marlis this morning. She can answer any questions and tell you more. And then um, outside, on your way out, so as, you, as we all leave, on your way to fellowship, there's a table. It's a table full of sign-ups because there's so many good things happening right now that we just put all the sign-up sheets in one place for you to stop and sign up to help with the MCC Fritter booth, that's going to be coming up really soon, and we need people to sign up to take slots to help our church do the Fritter booth at the West Coast Relief Sale, so sign up for that. Ongoing need for refreshments on Sunday morning, the very thing you'll be enjoying immediately following. Please sign up to help for that just once would be really helpful. Monday, Thursday, as I mentioned before, and scripture reading. We have scripture readers like Wayne read this morning in the service, and we just need to know who's available to read for us. So there's a whole lot of things to sign up for this morning. So just Walk by that table and put your name on a bunch of sheets. I want to say thank you to everyone who came um, on the workday yesterday and those who helped get things ready for the workday. Um, it's one of these days where a lot of things happened that you probably don't notice because it's, things got organized up in the attic and over in the kitchen and the storage or spreading bark around the property. So the fact that you don't notice those are horrible means that really good work got done. And a lot of other things did too. So thank you to everyone who helped take part yesterday and did things before um, and after. I also mentioned finally that um, today we always make note on our communion Sundays of our church's deacons fund. That's a special fund that we have that we use to help people with specific um, material needs. And if you would like to make a contribution to that, you can always write a check, just write deacons fund on it or put a note with any giving um, in the box and just write Deacon's Fund. So I wanted to point that out to you this morning. I think that's it for me. Yeah. Rather than yelling at Arthur about the Palm Sunday booklet, or the Stations of the Cross booklets, I just figured I would mention it. We also have in the Narthex small Stations of the Cross booklets for you to take with you. Um, there are pictures of all of the Stations of the Cross that are at St. James uh, with some traditional scripture references and reflection questions and prompts. Um, if you would like to meet in person there sometime this week, let me know and I would love to meet with you to walk through those stations. And now, as you know, we are preparing for the entrance of the cross, after which we will depart the sanctuary in silence. And we ask that you go all the way out into the courtyard and hold your conversations until then. And now in celebration, we join the crowds of old, waving branches, giving honor to the Messiah. And yet our celebration is bittersweet, for our story doesn't end here. We know the pain of what lies ahead. Today anticipates the rest of the story, a story of betrayal and death, a story of hope and resurrection. <laughs>